Hello guys, I hope you're well. Thank you so much for joining me today for another Sunday edition. Please excuse the rain noise on the roof because the weather outside at the minute is absolutely terrible. Anyway, if you watch my previous episode, you'll see me making my first ever vlog with the Fuji X-S10, which I've got here. Um, now, if you haven't seen that video, you know, please go ahead and check it out. It's essentially lots of video footage and some photography as well. The link's up there and down in the description if you fancy checking it out. But yeah, today I thought I'd give you my thoughts on the Fuji X-S10 from a vlogging and landscape photography perspective. So these are the main two reasons that I'm going to be using this camera. So I thought I'd share with you, you know, my thoughts on that. And there's plenty of other reviews out there if you're interested in Know, sports wedding photography portrait photography or anything like that but yeah this is more from a vlogging and yeah landscape photography perspective so there are a lot of things i love about this little beauty but there's a few that i don't as well so we're we'll taking a look at those a little bit later but firstly let's look at the the vlogging side of things the vlogging perspective and actually that's the main reason for my purchase of this camera for vlogging so firstly the ergonomics um i have to say they're absolutely fantastic for such a small camera i can't remember you know a camera feeling this as this nice to hold um you know it really does feel great which is always a bonus you know it's nice and lightweight which is great for vlogging now usually when i'm out vlogging i've got two cameras i've got one for filming and one for taking the photos so having a nice lightweight setup for vlogging is critical for those long hikes into the mountains I've also found this uh, 15 to 45 XC lens works well for video too. I didn't have one single issue with it with the face detection autofocus um, with this while I was filming last week. So that was really good because obviously having that face detect makes it much, much easier to be able to film yourself. Um, the flippy screen is, yeah, brilliant for vlogging, isn't it? Um, it's one of the reasons I bought it. Now, I'm not a massive fan of it photography, but for filming oneself, it definitely saves so much faffing about, you know, having to do test shots uh, when you're doing pieces to camera. The 120p and the 240p slow motion is great as well. I think the quality is pretty decent considering it's spitting out a 1080p process file. Now, obviously the format of the XS10 is a lot different to the more retro looking Fuji X-T3 and X-T4. And while I love that style of camera for photography, I'm not, it's not so flexible for video, to be honest. Um, shooting with the command dials um, is a lot better for video and it puts in a lot less camera shake than it does you know, trying to move the top dials. So actually for video, I actually prefer using the command dials. Now, I've completely customized all of the function buttons here um, on the camera to allow me to get to all of the settings I need for video with just my right hand. It makes accessing them really quick and easy and it's great for changing things on the fly. If you're interested in how I've set this up, how I've customized this for video, then please let me know in the comments. Maybe I'll do a video about that as well. Now on the rear of the camera, it's great that we can see our histogram in the live view. This makes obtaining the right exposure really easy when you're shooting. I think the 4K footage looks great straight out of camera, especially with the Eterna film simulation and a few tweaks to the uh, tone curve. I think baking in the looking camera is really important for me as I try to do as little color correction as possible when I'm editing. Uh, with the file being 8-bit, uh, right into the SD card. I think over-processing or color grading will make the image fall apart quite quickly. So my advice would be to play around with the film simulations and the different settings, and it will save you a ton of time editing, and you can still get a really nice looking cinematic file straight out of the camera. So as an aside, if you're using a Ninja V like I am now to film this, the camera will automatically output a 10-bit file. So especially if you're shooting in ProRes, you can get a really nice uh, looking uh, image out of that and it's great to um, it's great to edit with as well um, with the ProRes file so yeah but obviously you're not going to be using a you know Ninja V or recorder or monitor when you're out vlogging so but I just thought I'd mention that anyway in terms of the IBIS it's definitely better than the X-H1 but that's the probably well pretty much the only comparison I have as I haven't really used IBIS on any other cameras but I've been really really impressed with the IBIS for video use in this camera so there's lots of pros, but there are also a couple of issues that I'm not massively keen on. The first big one is the ISO setting. You've got the ISO dial on the top there. 
Now, all of my other Fuji cameras, when you turn the ISO dial, you can see the setting on the back of the screen change, which is fine. You get the full view of your composition on the rear LCD as the exposure changes. However, on the XS10, whenever you change the ISO, it brings up this completely pointless ISO gauge on the right-hand side of your screen. Now, the issue with that is, uh, it completely blocks out your histogram. You can't see histogram. So when you're changing your exposure, you can't see your histogram changing. So until you've gone back into your live view mode, you can't check your histogram and see if you're overexposed or not. Um, I just don't see the point in it when you can see your ISO setting down at the bottom of the screen anyway. Now I've looked in the menu settings and I can't see any way of changing this, but if there's anybody out there that knows a way that you can, please let me know, because I would love to be able to change that. If there's not a way of changing it, then hopefully Fuji will sort this out with a firmware update. I also find the uh, flippy screen a little bit on the flimsy side. I guess it's not gonna be as robust as the three-way pivoting screen on the X-T3, but it definitely feels like it could break, you know, if it's dropped on its side or something like that. I also find the, uh, the rear of the screen here quite soft as well. And I think maybe if something was pressed against it in the bag, it's not gonna do it much good. So I'd be a little bit wary, you know, about placing it next to things in your bag if you flip the screen around that way. But then I guess it will offer better protection than having the actual LCD screen facing out. So, you know, just weigh that up. All that being said though, the screen looks great and it is nice to have a flip out screen for vlogging and it is one of the biggest reasons I picked up this camera in the first place. So another downside is that you can't set the uh, C1, C2, C3, C4 custom modes on the dial on the top there for video only stills. But hopefully that will come in a you know, future firmware update. I think it'd be nice to use it maybe to quickly change frame rates or something like that. So let's move on to the photography side of things. So firstly, I didn't pick up this camera to use as my main stills camera, more a case of vlogging for and you know when I'm gonna go on maybe a summer camping trip and I want a super lightweight setup. But I still think it has a lot to offer for stills. The image quality, you know, it's fantastic. It's essentially, there's no difference between this, the X-T3 and the X-T4. So whichever camera you're using, the end result will probably be the same. Also, the IBIS is nice when shooting handheld, especially when shooting at narrower apertures, you know, when your shutter speed is likely to be a lot slower. I've been able to get pretty sharp photos at about an eighth of a second, no problem. Um, probably could go less, but I don't have the steadiest hands to be fair. But yeah, you could probably get down to half a second if you're really, really steady. I've moved my ISO from the ISO button over here to the left-hand top dial. This makes it more in keeping with the X-T3 and the X-H1, and that helps with my muscle memory. So I'm always doing the same thing when I pick up all of the cameras. I think that really helps when you're you know, in a bit of a rush and you just uh, want to grab an image on the go. So yeah, I've just customized that over there. I think that really helps. But you still get that annoying ISO gauge when it, you do change it, which seems pointless. I think the screen is definitely good enough for checking critical focus when you're zooming in. Uh, I think that's another big plus. Didn't have any problems with that the other week when I was out. Now, I don't tend to use a touch screen that much. I'm not a big fan of touch screens, but the touch to focus does work really well. So if that's something you like doing, you won't have any problems with that at all. So a couple of negatives, I'll say the shutter doesn't sound as nice as it does on the X-T3 and the X-H1. It sounds a little bit more tinny, a little bit cheaper, but I think they had to cram a lot more into such a smaller space. So I guess that's probably why we've got a bit of a trade off there. So it doesn't sound so damp and so professional sounding if you like. Um, obviously, it's not as tactile in terms of the top dials as the X-T3, the X-T4, but what it lacks for in that, it makes up for in the ergonomics. So I'm pretty happy in that regard. Now, the XS10 only has one SD card slot, which you can find down here next to the battery. So if you're planning on doing any professional work, you hear my dog barking, uh, um, then obviously I probably wouldn't use this for a wedding, but you know, for a landscape shoot or a vlog, perhaps isn't gonna be that much of a problem. Now, I probably would say that I'd be more concerned about losing a fantastic landscape photo rather than all of my video footage. Um, I could probably live with that. But yeah, it's a bit of a tough toss up. My recommendation would be to go with the best cards you can possibly afford. I use SanDisk Extreme Pro cards, never had a problem with them, touch wood. So 
The biggest negative I'd say about this camera is probably going to be its lack of weather sealing. Now, I don't think it's so important for video side of things as it is for stills. Now, let me just explain why. Let's take a quick look at my X-H1, for example. As soon as I put a mic on the top of it and open up that side door to plug it in, it's not weatherproof anymore. That means I've always got to protect it from the elements. So the XS10 actually wins here because the mic can be plugged in separately. Uh, you don't have to have this side door open. So, you know, that's a good plus point. But whenever I put a mic on it anyway, I've got to protect that mic from the elements. So I'm going to need to protect it anyway. For stills though, quite often I've got my camera locked down on the tripod for an hour or so while I wait for the light, sometimes in pretty grim conditions. So it does get wet quite often. So having a really good weather seal body for my stills landscape photography is very, very important. It often gets wet. So yeah, definitely need that. So I wouldn't be taking this out for stills on a rainy day. That being said, you could put a bag over it and protect it that way, but it's just another step you're gonna to have to take. My advice would be if you're planning to do uh, photography trips in the rain is to maybe look at perhaps the X-T3 or the X-T4, which has got weather sealing. Anyway, time will tell how all this plans out, but my initial thoughts are very, very positive uh, with this little beauty, especially for a uh, you know, vlogging perspective from a vlogging point of view. So I'd just like to say a massive thanks to everybody that watches, likes, comments and shares my videos. Your support is much appreciated. Also a big thanks to everyone that has recently joined the Photographer's Clubhouse. If you haven't had a chance to check that out yet, the link is over here and also down in the description. Anyway guys, until next week where I'll be at, well hopefully back out shooting some landscapes if this awful weather disappears. Until then, take care and I'll see you soon.